Hi guys, this is Wade from Wade's Orchids, and this is going to be a how-to type segment. And what we are going to do is we are going to make something that ends up looking like this. Okay, uh, this this is a, a Bulbophyllum vaginatum. It's two pieces that are tied onto this, which is basically. Uh, we're starting with hardware cloth here and we are going to stuff it full of sphagnum moss and other things and end up with something that can accommodate uh, a rambling type of orchid uh, something that that like vaginatum here has got a lot of distance between the two uh, gross in other words a, a long rhizome if you look here you can easily see that this is about two inches between the rise of, of rhizome between each growth here and uh, it's nearly impossible to keep it in a pot and doing something like this will allow you to keep something like this happy and healthy and have a nice place to grow into a, a nice size plant uh, in the home or under lights uh, without taking up a whole lot of space. Okay, so uh, what you can do with this is I've, I've been keeping mine in, in this, which is uh, basically I'm using it as a saucer, but it, I think it's from a microwave dish or something. And uh, if you want to, you can... Uh, water down into the saucer and this will pull the water up and keep it moist now you don't want to keep this wet uh, just just moist is going to be very good and especially at first you're going to have to be careful that you don't get it too wet because uh, you aren't going to be having uh, too much in the way of uh, roots that's going to be pulling from this so we're going to be careful so let's get on with uh, the actual work of doing this and as I said uh, you're, you're going to need some tools okay we're going to use another bulb of film here I have two nice pieces of uh, bulb of film JM Galati which is a really nice primary hybrid um, and we are going to wire this or tie it onto here. Now this is 18 inches long and I've determined that this is a little bit too long so I'm going to cut some off of it. Um, and tin snips like this is probably about the best way of doing it so just because I'm a little bit OCD, I'm going to actually measure here. Um, I did measure that this is 18 inches, so I want to measure at a six inch place here, and I'm going to cut this off. And if you'll just bear with me, you want to cut this very close to the, the edge here so that you don't get too much left over. And if you want, you can even sand these a little bit to try to get the, the sharp points taken care of. So we're going to go right around here and cut this off. Just like this. And, uh, I, I wanted to mention to you uh, the other dimension that, that's rolled up here. This is uh, about 12 inches. So uh, that, that goes, that ends up making about a four inch diameter uh, pole or tree or whatever you want to call it. And it's important when you're cutting this 
that you're you're very careful because uh, these things uh, are really sharp. And you just go around, be as careful as you can. And we're almost done. There we go. Okay. So we have this piece left, which we are not going to use right now. The next step, uh, this is even a little more time consuming, is we're going to take the prongs that, that are left here. Uh, let me get as close, to, a little bit closer. We're going to take these and with a pair of pliers, we're going to bend each one of them over so that it latches onto the other end and uh, I'll probably start in the middle just like this uh, these are called Lyman's pliers really handy for doing uh, I, I'd be lost without it without them so I'm going to just bend these as much as I can here. So that should be enough to get us uh, latched on. And uh, I have found that once you get started, that uh, just uh, a regular pair of pliers like this uh, or cutters work pretty well because the lineman pliers you can't get in needle nose pliers would work really well so we will be back after I get all these turned around like that and put in Okay, so here we are with our finished cylinder, uh, and uh, we are about ready to start stuffing this. So, uh, I'll put this here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start out by just putting some of that down in um, I'm going to use my ruler here to uh, tamp this down a little bit now what I'm going to do as we are doing this is uh, I have got wine corks here that my friends always save and give to me no I do not drink all this myself but uh, we are going to be putting wine corks in with this uh, try to find a place where I can get them and still have them out of your way so as as we do this I'm just gonna try to get wine corks in the middle there and we are just going to go right on down Just do more wine corks. And more sphagnum. The reason I'm using wine corks, and you don't have to use wine corks. You, you can use uh, lava rock or something like that. Uh, you don't want something that can, that can break down because uh, this, we want this to last for a good long time and if it's if it can be uh broken down as time goes past it won't last so long uh, also we want to make sure that the sphagnum moss does not break down too quickly 
So uh, the more corks or lava rock or whatever it is that you put in there, the more air it will have within this cylinder. And I'm just going along, tamping it down in. As this gets tamped in, it will give more rigidity to, to this. Uh, you probably notice that, that you can squeeze this and have the thing pop loose. Well, this won't happen very much once you get this filled up. Also, uh, it, it pretty much goes without saying that, that the more other ingredients, wine corks, lava rock, etc., etc., that you put in here, the less water it will retain. So, if you want something that retains a lot of water, you put less wine corks in. So, this is working very nicely. Make sure that you have a good amount of sphagnum moss. And also that the sphagnum moss is of good quality. Because if you start with poor quality moss, it will degrade very quickly. And I know this, this is taking a lot of work. But, you are creating something which will hopefully create a very nice specimen plant that will last five years or, or more. I think you will find that as, as this gets uh, kind of covered in plant, it will dry out much more quickly and the more quick, quickly it dries out, the, the less likely it is that the sphagnum moss will deteriorate. Make sure you get this down in here pretty good. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on here to make sure that Now, if you're growing under lights, the, the size of this may be limited to the height of, of your lighting. So, keep that in mind. Also, if you are at a windowsill that gets light from one direction, you want to make sure you keep turning this like at, at least every week. That way everything will keep growing fairly evenly. Because ideally what we want to do is we want to end up with having this completely covered in plants. Also, I, I would like to venture to say that, that uh, this will make a, a really good exhibit at a show. Something that, that happens, uh, and it happens fairly quickly for me being in a greenhouse, is I start to get, um, this stuff will start turning green. 
within a couple of weeks or so. And if left to its own, that will form like an algae or something. So if you have a little bit of live moss that you can put in at a couple of places uh, after you're finished here, just kind of like wedge it in, uh, it would help to, to have that have moss rather than algae. So we're going to just put the rest in a sphagnum moss and again we're packing it nice and tight. I always look for uh, little stems and stuff uh, in the sphagnum moss. You always get some of that, even even with the best quality. Now it looks like since this is so tall, it might want to fall over, especially since it's dry. And I think we're. We're just about finished here. Like to keep tucking it in, make this nice and firm on top. Okay, we're we're going to say that that's good enough. Just a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, now we can get rid of the moss here. And we will tell this guy to stand up. Right? Stand! Yeah. See how well it behaves already? Um, now, this is our fishing line. And what I do is I, I use a, a clay pot here and I put this, the spool of line in the pot so I it stays fairly stable and I can just pull it out as I need it. So we'll, we'll start by just tying it on. Oops. Let's try that again. I guess you aren't supposed to pull it so tight that you break it. Usually I, I like to take this through like three or five times. Okay. So, we have got to start. Um... I would not worry too much if you see the corks. That's not going to matter. Now, I have two pieces here of J.M. Galati. And I'm just going to wrap it around here. Try to get the roots so that they're all nice and tight. I hope you can see this. Uh, 
Okay, and we'll put a piece down lower on the other side. Something like that. Now, what we are after here is eventually we want to see these things uh, grow around and up and back down. Like I say, try, try to catch the roots real well when you're doing this to keep them up against the uh, the moss I think we're pretty good now when you're doing this don't rush it okay this is something that takes a while to do uh, in spite of the amount of time that uh, you saw, uh, I've, I've done this before a couple times, and, uh, you know, especially if you haven't done anything like this before, take your time with it, okay? Because you'll, you'll end up with a much better project in the end. Now, what I am doing is trying to find where the end of my string is. And I don't see it anywhere. Huh. Well, we will do this another way then. We'll just uh, prop this up. Uh, take something here, cut it. These things, when you buy them, they're really sharp, so be careful. This would go a lot better if I could find this. Is that it? No. Nope. Well, we're, we're just going to try to get it looped through here. Sometimes this is a royal pain. If you can push it down under something, whoops, well, now it isn't. If you have a real, a needle with, with a really big eye, that might be handy. Okay, I have that in. Now I'm going to try to catch it and bring it up here. Okay, we got it. Any of you that know your knots at all, uh, what I'm doing here is putting half hitches in. And that should keep it pretty well. Okay. So I'm, I'm letting the end of this loose in case I, I need to retie it at some point. Now, uh, 
what you can do is you can uh, put this in in a pot like this and put rocks around it uh, this is a five inch pot so five or six inch pot would work good for something like that uh, if you want to you can also hang it which uh, works really nice uh, if if you're uh, hanging from like a window sill uh, window uh, frame or something here's what I did this is just uh, bent in half and then you uh, put loops on the end and you could just attach it very easily here like this and then hang it from an S hook or whatever but basically there you have your start and we will keep an eye on this as uh, the days and months and years go by to show you how well or how poorly it does so I'm, I'm going to hang this from an S hook and uh, I will water it very lightly uh, just so that it's moist we don't want it to be wet because this will maintain the moisture for quite a while when when we start like I said once we get a lot of plant material on here it will start drying out much more quickly uh, so that's my project for today if you guys uh, would like to do one and uh, you know as as you uh, make them you can send photos in and also uh, send photos in how they do as time goes by so thank you very much this is Wade from Wade's Orchids here we'll see you then